DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. Are there people on Facebook? And now, ladies and gentlemen, it's another night to talk about running your DJ business with KC and Brian B. Good evening, everybody. How you doing, Brian? I'm doing good. How are you, man? I'm doing good. So much to talk about this week. I feel like we didn't even have to think <laughs> about what to talk about because social media and just the world gave us so much to talk about this week. DJ related, business related. So I'm all about uh, keeping it right on what's trending right now. What do you think? I agree. I agree. We've got a lot to cover. <laughs> I hope gotcha. we can get through it in an hour. <clears throat> so last week, uh, any interesting events? You're always jet setting, flying all over the place. Yeah, I did um, some parties out in Dallas this past weekend. It was uh, it was cool. It was a great. Uh, it was a nonprofit, a national nonprofit that I'm a part of, and uh, it was their big fundraiser. And also celebrating those that were um, a part of it and uh, the donors as well. It was a costume party, unlike I've ever seen. It was uh, just off the hook. There was a great a band there as well that played. Nice. Um, and they were solid, solid band. So uh, it was great. It's great. Very good. And for those of the people tuning in, tell them uh, where are you based out of? Oh, yeah. Uh, New York City. Um, so, yeah, right in Manhattan. Right. So Brian is the jet set high flying jet riding. I can't remember the rest of the uh, <laughs> the uh, WWE thing, but uh, he is the world traveler, folks. So try and something you definitely want to uh, keep on your radar. So um, my weekend was pretty lazy, actually. I was in the office meeting with clients, and uh, this past weekend <coughs> was the big bar mitzvah showcase here in Chicago. Mm -hmm. I uh, supplied some decor for one of the hotels, and just for me, my, my bar mitzvah days are over, and I was <laughs> really reaffirmed by that, seeing everybody running around and all the dancers. And it was great to see everybody, but it just made me realize that I'm very happy on the uh, uh, being off of the the dance cubes, so to speak. It's just not for <laughs> me anymore. Right. right. So speaking of Sunday night, <laughs> Sunday night was the Grammys. Did you tune in? You know, so usually uh, I'm upgraded to first class 90% of the time now, and okay. they usually have a TV ready to go. Wi-Fi was down. No TV uh -oh. streaming. Nothing. So I couldn't do anything. So uh, I didn't see anything until I got home. And, Got it. and then just kind of saw the highlights. So I did get okay. to see that. Of course, I saw all the chatter. I have I've got it taped, but haven't had a chance to watch it. But uh, of course, lots of lots of political uh, stuff going on. As, right, as which is, is uh, which is one of the things that uh, actually brings me to you know tonight's subject. You know, they say that on social media and in general, you're not supposed to talk about religion, politics, or money. But they're also the three highest trending things that you see on <clears throat> social media or in conversations. Right. Somebody bought a new car. Somebody bought a new house. Somebody got a new job. You know, in the DJ world, people are justifiably um, 
they are justifiably showing their latest, greatest toys that they bought or the latest, greatest event that they did. And then um, traditionally during the holidays, obviously, people are wishing everybody Merry Christmas and Happy Easter. And uh, in the Gentile world, they're showing pictures of their kids' christenings and baptisms and um, first communions and confirmations. And in the Jewish world, we've got bar mitzvah pictures. So that kills that. And then we go to politics, which, let's be honest, that's the number one trending thing. So... Everyone, I always get it at me because I choose to be a little more political than uh, than most on social media. I get warned all the time that <laughs> I need to dial it down. The question then, you know, or it'll affect my business. The question is, do you think the, Gra- the Grammys lost? Uh, let me take a quick look. I just had it here. Uh, I think it was like 20. Grammys lost 6 million viewers in ratings. Hmm. 6 million. They were down 24%. From last year, okay, which that's that's pretty huge. So the question being is, and, and this has to do with business, this is start us yapping. The question is, what do you think the reason is? Yeah, I mean why do you think there was a huge drop? It's funny, there wasn't a whole lot of uh, chatter about any of the musical performances outside of Kesha, and that wasn't positive, you know what I mean? So there wasn't anything right. like, super spellbounding about it. Um you know, I, I don't know. I mean, they everyone points to it being too much politics, but you know, it, that was, it never that stops. That was one of the things. That was one of the things that was discussed. Another thing is, again, as we're discovering, adapting our businesses to millennials. Everyone's saying that millennials are unplugged; they're not watching TV, which means they could really care less. Right. About the Grammys as well. So, yeah. and I think this segues into is. Imagine right now if you lost 24% of your customers right, right now, right. gone, right. okay? You know, it's kind of interesting to me to see how the Grammys are going to bounce back from this for next year to figure out how to to make it that way. If you lost 24% of your business and you hung on, right? the question being is, you know, how do you bounce back? And And I think part of that is on a daily basis – and we see this all the time in DJ chat groups. Bridal shows are a waste of time. Going to DJ shows are a waste of time. Joining DJ associations are a waste of time. I don't have to be on the knot. I don't have to be on a wedding wire. I don't have to do this. I don't have to do that because I've never done it. <clears throat> and so the question being is, is this mentality, okay, and I'm not judging anybody, but is this mentality, um, is it going to cause you to lose 24% of your business? You right. know, and that's that's really what it comes down to. Are you not adapting and moving with the times? Right. I mean, look at the VMAs, right? I mean, look, at, no one watches that anymore. Yeah, that, nobody watches MTV anymore. And, and that was like total pop culture. And they're struggling to, to try to rebrand themselves. I mean, they're bringing back reboots of Jersey Shore and all kinds right. of stuff to try to make it work. And uh, it may be too late. For them. Well, and here's the thing. I am at the uh, very young age where I... I grew up with MTV. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, we couldn't wait for Friday night videos. That was the thing to do on Friday nights. And the Michael Jackson thriller, I remember seeing it at the roller rink because I was at that age where the timing of my age and that came out. And <clears throat> you don't hear anybody talking about it. The last no. music video that I think anybody talked about was Psy. Right. Gangnam style. And it's still the number one most popular music or, or video on YouTube. Right. So again, it's a matter of moving with the times and it just seems like, you know, maybe things are just moving so quickly that, uh, you know, companies can't keep up, but you have to, otherwise you're dead, dead in the water. Right. 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 I mean, the good thing is, is that as long as the music is good, people will still, you know, tune in at some point. I mean, it's not like, uh, they're going to lose everybody just because, I mean, Bruno Mars, I heard, rocked it and killed it. Um, right. Uh, Kesha, you know, her whole situation with uh, her producer and all of that. Um, I, You know, they said her performance was terrible, but I honestly think that some of it is just because, you know, she was crying. It was an emotional moment. Yeah. I mean, obviously, you're not going to sound great when all that's going on and you're dealing with all of that kind of stuff. But I think her point got across for sure. Do you think also it's, again, very much like how DJs have styles and they try to match their clients up? 
you look at the way the VMAs were, and let's take the VMAs away because it's like a subculture almost. But right. let's look at the American Music Awards. The performances and everything going on just seems so, it looks like and always has been so much more exciting than the Grammys. Right. And I feel like the American Music Awards was like homecoming. It was fun. Mm -hmm. It was wild. It was crazy. And then the Grammys was very much like prom, very formal. Everybody was dressed nice and they walked the red carpet and, and it's just a different vibe. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So. All right, let's drive Mike Walter Grayson now and say hello to some of the people that have been kind enough to not only tune in, but also say hello. So, uh, Dave, forgive me. Uh, David Illich, Illich. Jody's, of course, with us. John Sawyer, hello. Uh, Scott, is it Rousse? Uh, DJ Hybrid. Randy at Sound Obsession DJ. Um, looks like our uh, boy Donnie Lewis is here from Your Event Matters Entertainment. Um, who am I missing? That seems to be the, the big ones right here. Scott Carroll's here. How are you, Scott? Uh, John Sawyers and all of it. So, guys, thanks for uh, tuning in and <coughs> chiming on. And, and on Facebook, we got Chris Hintz. We got Mike Walter. Uh, hey. We got uh, Brady. Maybe we shouldn't say hello to him because he finds us saying hello to people boring. <laughs> and then we got uh, Santa Creek Furrows as well. Interesting. Awesome. So we got a couple of viewers uh, viewing us on Facebook tonight as well. Nice. All right. So let's segue then. We talked about styles of DJs and things that DJs were complaining about. And um, I don't know if you caught it last weekend. Mark Farrell redid his entire Getting What You're Worth group. And he let everybody apparently who's ever had any inclination to join the group into the group only to, I guess, kind of kick them out of the group because he's restructuring the group to be very specific to if you believe in the getting what you're worth message, um, that's who he wants to surround himself with. Hmm. And if you if you're not 100 percent on board, he's you know, he's not interested in having um, anybody else in the group. And, that, and that's his group. He can do whatever he wants to. But right. What was interesting was <clears throat> Byron Gunter, and he's a DJ that's going to be presenting in Mobile Beat, has a very different business model than sure. most, and it really kind of conflicts with Mark Farrell's um, business model. And so, you know, here, here's the interesting thing about this. As long as you're making money and you're comfortable with your life, you know, I don't see the reason to tear down everyone else. Um, <clears throat> Mark Farrell believes that you should be the very best entity of yourself and that you should charge as much as you possibly can, reason or is as reasonable as possible, but that if you're a premium DJ, you should have premium pricing. Right. And um, and if nothing else, and, I, and I'm sure I'm not getting it a hundred percent right. But his big thing was evaluating what you're worth. And he feels that the more the people evaluate what they're worth and what they bring to the table, the, the more they'll raise their rates. Mm -hmm. um, and so his dream many years ago, like 15 years ago, was to have a minimum of $1,200 as the industry average. And then your premium DJs would be two, three, four, five thousand dollars $5,000. Byron I, Gunter <clears throat> has a different model where he believes in providing a very good DJ um, with more of a, a basic stack them and rack them kind of a concept where the DJ still do an unbelievably great job, but there isn't as much customization and he chooses to be extremely affordable. So his rates might be five ninety five starting, I think is what his website said today. And then um, he's got a, a whole page of extras of, monograms and, and uplighting and photo booths and it looks like he's also got a photography division and such. So he's just choosing to be more affordable. Yeah. Um, and so this past weekend, man, it was, it was quite interesting because uh, 
you know, one thing I've learned about Byron, and I've yet to meet him in person, and I'll, I'll hopefully meet him in Vegas this this year. He's on the chat right now. I see that. Hello, Bri uh, Byron. Thanks for joining us. <clears throat> he is very outspoken, as is as is uh, Mark Farrell, and sure. both are right, but they choose to be extremely um, opposite ended with their beliefs, and so you can naturally imagine how the uh, the chaos ensued over the weekend. Yeah. So that was uh, that was kind of how that wound up going. So it, it made for interesting reading. So um, Byron just chimed in. We do a half a million sales in little city of uh, Columbus, Ohio. Right. And for those of you that know about Columbus, Ohio, they have uh, Ohio State University and nothing else. That's pretty much all that's there. Right. Um, <laughs> so to be doing those kinds of, well, to be doing a half a million dollars anywhere. Right. is impressive. Yeah. I mean, let's, let's be honest. Uh, it's a, it's extremely impressive. So, well, there's two ways to skin a cat, right? That's how the saying goes. So I agree. I mean, what works for one doesn't have to work for another. And you know, my whole thing is if you're making <laughs> money, like at the end of the day, net, not right. gross, but net then, and your model is different than mine. Great. I mean, speaking of Joe Bunn and Mike Walter, I mean, those guys, totally different models yet they're right. still doing well too and absolutely you know, so i don't i don't think uh you can say one is just the way you have to go i think you can do whatever your heart desires as far as as far as that goes as long as you're true to yourself right now there are some that will say that byron's business model especially successful holds down the industry or at least in columbus would you agree with that statement or would you say that that's like saying Walmart holds down Macy's. Yeah, uh, your second, your the latter. Uh, okay. I mean, it's it's yeah, sure. People are going to you know, um, if they have only that to compare it to, then they're going to say, well, what makes you worth this? And then it's up to you to or justify your pricing, just like it would be up to Mercedes if they were going to compete against Toyota. You right. know, they're not they're they're not bummed because there's way more Toyota dealerships in the in the area than Mercedes dealerships, but they've figured out what their niche is and what they are. My whole thing is instead of being better, be different, be who you are and attract your tribe. Do you? Yeah. You right. do you. Yeah. Right. No, I, I agree. Um it's pretty interesting because uh um I I can't imagine and I said this, I can't imagine Mercedes or Rolls Royce in a board of directors meeting going, I, I, I just don't know why Kia even exists. Right. I, I can't even imagine it. Why, why would anybody build a car company from scratch? Cause Kia is only what 15 years old, 20 years old, maybe. Yeah. Why would you go in there and, and sell that inexpensive car? If you're going to do it, <clears throat> you know, just do it the right way. Why not make a better car? Why right. make a cheaper car? Right. So, and I, and again, I'm not, I'm not talking about quality because, you know, I haven't heard anything really negative about Kia or, and if you take a look at Byron Gunter's company, Buckeye Entertainment, <clears throat> his reviews online are fantastic. That's what Mike Walter just I mean, said. He said they're glowing. He does quality and quantity. Yeah. And uh, I would imagine, too, that he, um, he probably has a much easier selling cycle than the more expensive DJs because he doesn't have to it isn't such a stretch for him to justify his pricing because right. from the sounds of it, um, you know, he's either right in line or even possibly just a hair under the market, uh, the market average out there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so well, that kind of, that kind of went towards like, so it's funny that I didn't even know about this chatter that was happening over the weekend, that whole that, thing. Yeah. And you know what? I, I don't know if I was just asked to be in the group all of a sudden, I was just, I got a news notification that I was accepted into the getting what you're worth group. And I didn't even know that I was. And, <clears throat> and um, I'm indifferent about Mark Farrell. I think he is very helpful. Yeah. And I, some people do take it over the top. And it's not his fault. It just is what it is. And then there are others that can't stand him, others that love him. And, and they've been uh, called Kool-Aid drinkers before or Fairlights and right. things along those. Um, but again. Well, how ironic that it went from that over the weekend to then Wedding Wire dropping their bomb thing on Monday, which 
lit the DJ world on fire. I mean, well, it was Peter Barry and uh, Mike Frenino who totally, totally lit that one on fire. And uh, for those of you that don't know, um, Wedding Wire announced, I guess, either a new business page or a new feature that uh, that allows a bride to type in a zip code for any type of category. Then it gives them an average of what their category is selling for in their specific zip code. Right. And so somehow Peter found out about it either on Monday or Tuesday. And uh, Peter was pretty outspoken about how off he felt that it was and how uh, how much it harmed the the business and and so on and so forth. So but what was he? I, I'm still like confused as to why he was upset because they're asking for not what his price is, not what the high end price is, but what the average is. Right. I mean, that was the whole I mean, when I, I actually clicked on the link myself and went to it, I didn't read the article. I just clicked on the zip code where you could see what the averages were. Right. And, and I mean, it seemed pretty spot on for the average in my areas. I felt it was pretty close in Chicago. And I even looked in Byron's area and Byron's area. The average was 800. So he's uh, he's even a little bit lower than the industry average out there, which is giving him a competitive edge pricing wise. Sure. But, um, you know, I spoke to another DJ in his market, Rod Randall. When I asked him what he thought the average um, DJ was in his market, he thought it was only about six or seven hundred dollars. So he was surprised when I typed in his zip code and it was eight. Mm -hmm. So here's a situation where he thought everyone's complaining that it's lower. Rod finds out that it's actually higher in his market than than what he thought. Chicago was, I think, twelve hundred dollars on average. And again, some of it's tough because you don't know, you know, you don't really know what everybody's including. So. Right. So I, I'm still confused. Like, what was the argument? Was he saying that the average should have been higher or he thinks, that he was pissed that they were revealing what the actual averages were? And therefore, I think, I think he was more upset with what I think he was more upset that it was an undocumented or unsourced um, an unsourced uh, source because it, it never really said how they came to know of these numbers right and that was the big argument with a lot of people and so you know and they that, looked to wedding wire being like you know the bible basically on those numbers. correct yeah which is really kind of funny because yeah. almost everybody that disagreed with wedding wire their comments were wedding wire sucks i would never go to that i tried it and i never got any business which is kind of ironic if you never got any business that stands to reason that perhaps there aren't that many brides on it. And if there aren't that many brides on it, why are you getting upset about a website that apparently you don't think there's a lot of brides on talking about what the price was? So, hmm. Hmm. yeah. Yeah. I mean, some people were saying that it came from their wedding wire profiles and you just put your, what your average price was and that they did an algorithm to like grab it from that information. That, but, that was put out there. I actually think that that was, um, I think that's probably where it's going to end up coming from. Huh. So, so that's that. Yeah. Uh, Mitch Taylor on his live at seven fifty five said how wedding wire got their numbers. So Jody, you don't want to share with us because Jody's like teasing it. Like it's a WWE thing and we're cutting to commercial. Yeah. So if Mitch Taylor uh, somehow figured it out or talked to somebody, I would love to know. So uh, let me ask Chris, do What's you that? think do you think it I mean did it bother you? I mean do you feel like it hurts your comp, your co potential clients that come to you by seeing that at all? The the only one that hurts me is me. If I'm not working hard enough, if I'm not putting out the right guys, if my guys aren't going out there and killing it, that's on me. Right. So right. I I never determined what my pricing was based on what the knot said or Mark Farrell said or wedding wire or anybody. So do you think you get any of those clients that see these kinds of averages and go, oh, well, you, this is way more than I, I thought, you know, because uh, according to this, as I'm, I haven't really run into that. I've run into it maybe a couple times, but not, not on the regular. I don't know. And, and here's the thing. They say that only 14% of consumers shop on price. Okay. So if they only shop on price, the rest is what I believe 86% shops on value. And it may have even changed now. 
because of the saturation point, what I call the Starbucks effect, 15, 20 years ago, I'd have clients that would that would drive 45 minutes to meet with me on a regular basis. Today, it's kind of like Starbucks. Like if right. the line's too long or whatever, you'll go two blocks over and that's okay. Or if you can't find parking in this one, that's okay. There's another Starbucks, you know, um, uh, four blocks away. And that's yeah. just the way that it is. And I think that we've become trained to that. So, so from that aspect, you know, I think that when somebody that is uneducated to your product or service asks you price, you shouldn't take it offensively because they don't know what else to ask you. Right. And that's right. really what it comes down to. And then it's up to you <clears throat> to try and sell the value component. Right. And then, in my opinion, end with price or right. open with price and then try to justify it. And, right. you know, I think for a lot of brides, it's sticker shock. I really yeah. do. Yeah. Well, you brought up somebody else before uh, when we were preparing them for this. You were talking about Rob Case's post, which I, I hadn't seen because I'm not on Facebook much during the day. And I only see it at night usually. And uh, I did get on and research that one because he, he, I guess, had a venue that had referred him or referred a client to him. Right. And the person came in asking, hey, you know, what's your price immediately? I got two others on the line. Like he just didn't give him the time of day. And right. he just, he, his answer was, hey, you're probably not for me. Um, or we're not a right match. I'm sure he's worded it a lot more eloquently than I'm saying now, but, sure. um, and then let it go. And then you and him kind of got into it a little, right? Cause well, you, my whole thing is just give him a price and I don't mean to be rude, but let's look at the way that, uh, that the world is buying today, right? You go to Amazon, you type in, I want an iPod or I want a right. stapler or I want underpants or whatever it is. And what ends up happening is you're given a price. So it's right. not. I don't think that it's inappropriate to be asked for a price. And then when you don't give it, right. It's there. You I don't have given a range and then hopefully that would have opened up some dialogue. Right. But I, I think it was probably not so much the price question, but just the other stuff that surrounded it. That's what I'm getting. Cause if I had a, somebody like that, it's not the price. It's just the overall vibe of the person that I'm getting. That probably isn't a good fit for me either. And, right. and, and I just would, I mean, it's not going to be being rude, but it would it would definitely be a, a warning flag for me that mm, this probably isn't a good fit because I'm assuming that, you know, if he's asking this and being so quick on it, there is probably a good chance that he doesn't see value. Of course, I don't mind giving him a price, but right. I can still in the back of my head go, even if I'm giving him that price, probably I'm going to decline this event anyway, because I used to be able to I used to just take whatever would come my way. Obviously, sure. you know, we all try to do that. But now I've gotten to a point where even if it were to hurt my pocketbook. I would still say no if it's not a fit anymore. I just, I just have had enough, dealt with enough problems over my years in doing this that now I'm, I'm just, I'm, you know, reducing the amount of problem childs right. <laughs> that I have. And I'm a big fan of just peeling the onion back mm -hmm. because we've had so many customers that go, it, it's okay if I give you like seventy five songs for the night, right? Mm -hmm. And when they get those, I turn around and go, why would you want to? Right. Why would you essentially want to pick out all of the music instead of having us, you know, read the room and kind of going from there. And sure. the reality is when you peel the onion back, you find out right. their sister had a horrible experience there. Right. They went to a wedding that had a horrible experience. And when you peel it back, you find out what the actual issue is. And I guess I'm much more of a fan of that than just say no. And the one thing that I had said was, <clears throat> and I asked a catering director friend of mine about it today, if you referred me and I did what Rob did and the, the customer came back and said, yeah, I called, I talked to your guy, Casey, I asked him for a price because I was just trying to get my budget put together. Sure. And he wouldn't give me a price. And then he tells me that I'm not the right fit. You know, she said to me, she goes, right. I, I wouldn't be happy. Right. You know, she goes, I understand, and I know you well enough that there had to be a reason. But right. at the same point in time, you're a reflection of me. So, yeah. you right. know, and I'm not saying Rob did anything wrong. I just I, I just think it could have been held different. In my mind, if he gave him a price, he got he gave the customer what he wanted. Right, right. And right. then if the guy called back, maybe he would then determine that he's right. definitely not the right fit. 
No, uh, I mean, I, I definitely think he should have probably given him a price. I mean, I would have. If he asked the question, if he literally said, well, what's your price? I stand behind my price. I have no problem saying like, hey, whatever the price is, this is what it is. And be and, and even if he were to you know have a little gulp in his throat, <laughs> it actually, it's fine. I mean, it is what it is. Then he can ask me, well, why are you so much more? And then I can go into my reasons. But, um, you know, I don't think that there was anything wrong with anything wrong with not telling them. I mean, you should definitely say your price if they ask for sure. Right. I, I and Crossroads. here's the other part of it. Even staying within the wedding industry, if they've shopped for venues, those venues have all emailed them uh, menus. Okay. There's, mm -hmm. there's enough vendors that have packages, which is what DJs have. Okay. Right. In some way, shape or form, there's, there's that. So if somebody asks, a, you know, that you can give them ranges based on what different needs are. So if they're, you know, our, our things range from this to this, because you might need a ceremony, you may want to choose some of our uplighting. But the reality is that, um, you know, I, I personally just wouldn't have cut ties with them. That, that's right. just me. Right. I would have been happy to give them a range and offer to mail them out a PDF. So he right. knows a little bit more about me, primarily to protect my relationship with the venue that referred us, as well as, again, if he was... The, the jerk that this guy said who's to stop say that he didn't he's not a big enough jerk he's just gonna immediately run around and go right to yelp or right or, not or whatever so that's all so i think i would have just handled it a little bit differently but again and, and i also think this is true of one other thing uh-huh as we get older we get crotchetier i mean you can say it's wisdom but i think that the reality is that a lot of the people that agreed with them tend to be your 40 and over DJs that sometimes are like, nope, not going to deal with it. And I get it. I right. don't do bar mitzvahs anymore. Right. I don't want to do them. Right. You know, it has nothing to do with the kids. Or, I just, it's just not for me. So right. Right. maybe he just felt that way and, and that was that. Right. Right. So tell me what everyone's saying on Facebook. Is Mike still with us? Did he comment? Um, He's yeah. probably gone. No, no, no. He's he, he's he's live and well. He said, "Yeah, if a client asks a question and you won't answer, that's rude." Um, <laughs> uh, but then some. Let's see. Some people. This is Nate Nelson's on the line. Hey, Nate, what's up, Nate. buddy? Some people want the best and will ask for our highest prices, highest price DJs, and some people ask for our lowest price. That's why we have multiple price points. Yeah, yeah. Um, good point. Good point. I think you could definitely define what your willing your bottom number is and what your top number is and if the more options you have in between i mean obviously you're going to attract more people um uh, to look at you obviously right chris hints uh commented going back to the wedding wire average is just that average um reviewed couples said what they paid for their dj um plus profile price uh who wants an average dj an average wedding an average life average people so there's a lot of the whole average thing um first thing comes out of scott wrote first thing that comes out of a bride's mouth is how much you charge which we kind of touched on um let's see john sawyers writes not to start a debate chris but i have paid top dollar and received average and paid less for things and received great value but that's not a pricing thing that just has to do with the company's quality in my opinion and how they they choose to uh, handle things right um average uh mark sound audio services says averages take into account the extreme highs and the extreme lows too the problem i have is that djs talk all this price but in real life when you go to make the purchase dot 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 so i think marks thinks that uh people may say that their price is one thing but uh they'll negotiate a little bit more yeah um Jody's all about the vibe of the customer. She's kissed enough frogs. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, let's see. Matt Christensen, before I give a price, I want a date of the of event and location. Well, in this case, I'm sure that he had he knew the event or location because they had referred him, and I'm sure that they had given a date. Uh, Chris Hintz says give a range. Um, every market's not the same as pricing. I agree with that as well. But I think the process is still the same. Um, and, and we're pretty much caught up. So, well, I mean, that kind of goes to what the other thing we were going to talk about tonight, or one of the other things was like just the whole DJ attitude, you know? Right. Like, I don't know if it's just me, but it just feels like so negative every time you put on social media. Like, our industry 
is one of the ones and maybe it's just because i'm blinded by the fact that it's it's i'm i'm friends with so many djs now but it just right. feels like our industry more so than any other is just always complaining about something it's something that's going on that's like not right uh I, whatever i can't say that i disagree and i've been on the negative side i've gotten on and complained plenty so i'm not gonna say that i'm that i'm like you know the gandhi of djs and saying you know you know um you know, be the change you want to see in the DJ world or, or what have you. But, but it does feel like as of late, and I don't know if it's because we're getting closer to a convention. And so people are a lot more chatty in general. Yeah. But between the, uh, th this, this whole wedding wire thing just to me was. It hit so a nerve, I'm sure for some of them. Right. Yeah. But it just seemed to be much ado about nothing. And that, then I'm with you on that everybody like took to it. It was like, you know, they were ready to take the pitchforks and the torches and burn down the wedding wire building, you know, and they didn't just shoot an email to, to anybody and ask. And if they didn't get a response or what have you, then, you know, okay. Then I could see you being angry and offended, but like but it, to me, it's all chatter. It's just like a bunch of noise that, you know, you don't want to, I didn't even get, I'm like, it doesn't affect me one bit, you know? Right. And well, and the interesting thing about our business is we've got people that hate DJ associations. We've got people that hate DJ expos. We have people that hate wedding wire. We have people that hate bridal shows. We have people that hate, uh, um, the not, we have people that, you know, hate wedding wire. They hate online reviews and, and I get it. Like you're not going to like everything, but you know, even on our show two weeks ago, there were four people that gave us a thumbs down and you and I both know we are pretty fantastic on this show, but yeah. Yeah. You know. Well, and that, it's funny. I got my first taste of that negativity when I did had that whole bird thing happen, you know, and my, oh, like the bird thing. Did I tell you about that? No, well, it's, it's a whole nother subject, but let's okay. just say this thing blew up. I was on like all these different like TV outlets. Cause a bird came onto the plane that I was flying and I oh. tweeted, tweeted about it. I like got all these interviews on CNN, like all over the place. It was over the uh, uh, new year's Eve. Okay. Anyway, um, I got like a bunch of hate mail, like a uh, hate tweets. I should say all these wow. people like tweeting about like, you know, well, you should have told them that you were, you know, platinum status and they would, the bird wouldn't have come in, you know, and all this stuff. I'm like, I don't know if she was trying to be funny or just trying to be cutting, but like, I go, wow. So this is kind of what it's like. Cause I'm, you know, obviously I don't have that kind of stature to get these kind of hate tweets all the time, <laughs> but I was just amazed to see the hate mail just coming in at such a clip. And I'm like, you know, you just got to tune it out. And, and same thing with this stuff, like with the, wedding wire world i'm sorry the wedding wire stuff i i don't even get involved with it like it doesn't bother me if someone's that butt hurt over uh wedding wire publishing some average rates then you're not competent in yourself enough to sell obviously if it's if it's affecting you that bad right right right, or there's right. something wrong with your model you know what i mean like you're gonna have other brides come and say well hey this guy charges 250 or whatever and you know so anyway i just I would love to see our industry turn around a bit more and like focus on not focus on that stuff and focus more on like the good things that are happening because uh, we need more of that in our, in our uh, industry. I think I agree. And I think part of that though is I, I think part of that, and I don't know how to make the change is people going to conventions, people joining associations. I think that when more and more DJ see that we all go through the same things all the time, they're going to have a feeling of normality that, okay, <clears throat> you know, in Brian or in Rob's case, you know, Oh, I just, I had a crazy customer call me like that too, you know, or right. if he was friends with the other three DJs on that list, you would think that he would have picked up the phone and go, did you just talk to this joker? Like, was he rude to you too? Or was it just me? And, and that's that. I mean, we've all had the bridezillas. We've all had, the customers that we've killed ourselves for that didn't even say goodbye to us at the end of the night. So, so, you know, that's that. Well, I guess wedding wild world wedding wire world is in Los Angeles next week. Okay. So I'm curious what the chatter will be like amongst the DJs there. If this will even like raise anything, maybe we'll be outside protesting. Like <laughs> everybody is today. Yeah. They're all <laughs> protesting. Yeah. So. The funny thing is the guys that are complaining are the ones that probably need it from wedding wires. So they're going to, you know, they talk all this big game yet. They're still going to spend the money advertising with them. You know what I mean? The people that 
that aren't butthurt over this don't need them anyway. You know what I mean? You know what's interesting, though, is I read a statistic many, many years ago, and it was out of uh, Anthony Robbins' book, that less than or 5% is the most. 5% of Americans will do continued education on their own outside of what's required by their industry. So the way that hairdressers have to have long hours at hair shows and stuff and CPAs and, and uh, everybody has to continue education, you know, for right. law and things like that. But if you're not in one of those, then what ends up happening is less than 5%. So it, if you think about the DJ world, right. Regardless of what DJ show you go to, if you add up all four or five DJ shows, local or, or national, what are we talking about? 4,000 mobile DJs, maybe. Mm -hmm. And God knows there's got to be 100,000 of them across North America mm -hmm. between Canada and uh, and the U.S. And right. it's just as easy to fly from Toronto to, to Las Vegas as it is to to uh, fly from Chicago there. You got one extra step of, of your passport. But, mm -hmm. you know, <clears throat> I mean, you know, you're flying all over God's green earth. So it's really not all that challenging. I mean, I flew, I spoke at the Canadian DJ show last year and I flew in on Friday morning, had my passport, boom, boom, boom. I had to get back, flew home Saturday night and that was that. But again, the nicest guys in the world that had hired me. And um, it, it was sad that there was just such a small turnout of, uh, of DJs because these guys have just, they're the nicest guys and they're killing themselves. And the, and the show was beautiful. They mm -hmm. did a great job. They had exhibitors. It just, uh, I was talking to 40 or 50 people only. So. Right. 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 Yeah. Well, Michael Durham says, Brian, can't we be upset because national publications and websites don't do anything to promote a better persona for the DJ industry. But that to me is why you join a national DJ association so that whoever's in charge of that association whether it's Carol Kessler or Hugo Drax, they can then turn to that associate. They can turn to that national publication and say, Hey, you know, these are the facts. This is this, how, how do we work together to really show, how do we work together to show a bride, not just to make sure that you have insurance, you know, or, right. you know, right. the criteria is you have to have a contract or insurance or, you know, how many songs they have or what have you, you know, well, and, and my, my answer to Michael is, I mean, you're assuming that they are trying to get to get at you, you know, that they're trying to hurt your business or hurt the right. industry. Do you really think that they are out to get the folks that spend money on our business? They're just reporting, I think, what their, you know, uh, statistics are showing them or whatever they're, you know, I don't think they're going with the lowest price point and like, you know, guys, let's, let's, let's make it sound like it's super cheap because we want to bring up some other industry or have them spend some other money elsewhere. They're right. just reporting what's out there. And, sure. and so if, if anything, Michael, get mad at the other DJs in the area. If you're, if you're frustrated that the, the pricing is too low um, or, you know, that, you know, you need to do some education there. I mean, I don't think it's the I don't think it's the publications that are are sliding us necessarily. Uh, they yeah, I agree. Supporting the, um, the facts. Yeah, David Ellich wrote. Uh, he knows the Canadian show was a small show, but they enjoyed having me. And David, I want you to know, I loved being there. And this is of no reflection on the show. It's just a matter of the industry as a whole. You know, I mean, the industry as a whole. How do you you know how do we get them out to shows? And as a guy who's got a lot of money riding on a DJ show called the marquee show in, uh, in July of this year, it, it concerns me. I mean, I'm, I'm putting out content like crazy. It's one of the reasons I'm doing the show is to make people aware of it. And, uh, you know, the reality is that, uh, I hope not just from a financial point of view, but just from an industry point of view, I know that when I started attending the DJ time shows in 1992, I learned a ton. I couldn't wait to go back. That's where I met you. That's where I met Mike Walter, Randy Ray, Randy Bartlett, countless other people that have had big impacts in my life and have helped teach me all kinds of different things. So, so that's that. Now, one of the things that I am going to go off 
thing is, if Mike Walter's watching, my goal is to teach him and Joe Bunn not to ever use the word gig again. That's going to be my goal for 2018 because it's one of those things. And I think it's a Jersey thing more than anything else. I just, I despise that word. Yeah. You're doing ah. a gig, you're doing a wedding, you're doing a mitzvah, you're doing a corporate event. So, but we'll get back on topic now. I, uh, when I thought of Mike Walter and, and uh, how impactful he's been in my life and my career, I just thought I'd bust his balls too. So <laughs> that's all. So Super Bowl Sunday. Super Bowl Sunday. Um, what do you think, Justin Timberlake? I just uh, before we got on the air, there was a there was a uh, news conference that they okay. were showing from Justin, and he said he's going to do something that's never been done at the Super Bowl uh, okay. halftime show. And I'm curious, like, if you had any guesses, what do you think? I mean, I feel like we've seen pretty much it all. You know what I mean? We have. Um, you know, there's been all kinds of stuff. A bunch of uh, the radio DJs were asking some of the Phillies players, um, how would you feel if they if he brought Janet back? And it was like a, a make good. And all of them were like, hell yeah. So who knows? Maybe Janet will pop up at the very end to do a cameo and tear his shirt off maybe. <laughs> um, you know, maybe we'll see the rest of the members of NSYNC. Um, Pepsi had a behind-the-scenes thing. And I should have checked it. There was one thing that he said. He said, perfection is the enemy of greatness. And I thought that was a really interesting quote in there because he doesn't it, care about it again. Being, what was it? Perfection is the enemy of greatness. Hmm. He doesn't have to be perfect at the Super Bowl. He has to be great at the Super Bowl. Hmm. And I started thinking, like, that's very true. You don't have to be perfect at someone's wedding, but you have to be great at it. Mm -hmm. You know, um, and I know that there was another quote that said, uh, perfection is the goal, but uh, greatness will be uh, accepted or something like that. It, it was a quote that I had seen somewhere else. But, you know, when I yeah. when I saw him interviewed and I heard that, I thought that was a, a pretty solid thing. I mean, he's got so many hits. I'm, I mean, I'm I'm kind of curious what he's going to lead with. I mean, what do you think? What do you think he's going to lead with? <clears throat> um. Sexy back. You think it's going to be that far back? You think he's going to go? Oh, he'll go back. I think he's going to go back. He'll definitely do catalog. And I think that he'd be smart coming out of the gate with something solid like a sexy back. And then again, the question is, will he go back to will in sync pop up? I don't know. I mean, they're, they're definitely keeping it very, uh, very hush hush. So yeah, uh, Mark's audio says Will Smith said that before. I wonder what philosopher they got that from. Um, oh, and then Jody said that maybe he'll dance with Tom Brady. I think Tom <laughs> Brady's going to be a little bit busy. He's going to be deflating uh, footballs for the second half of the game. So, <laughs> um, but here, you know what? We always talk about business. So I think that there's no question that um, I, there's no question that that the Super Bowl is the the biggest single day sporting event. Um, probably the only single day sporting event in, in, uh, in this industry, but I I'm amazed. And, and it always comes to, it's the one time of the year that people don't want to fast forward through commercials. And so I've said this before in seminars, do you know what a Super Bowl commercial costs? I, I looked it up. What NBC is charging for a 30 second spot for 2018? No clue. Five million dollars. Right. Now, very much like a bridal show or anything else, I'm gonna we're gonna I'm gonna ask people to chat. Do you think five million dollars is a lot of money for a 30 second commercial on the Super Bowl? So, you know, we'll we'll let some people chime in and and uh, we'll kind of get to our point from there. But um, but I'm just curious to see what people think or what their initial reaction is. Um, Mark's right. It's probably three million now. Nope, it's five million. I, I researched it before the show, and um, it's definitely they said just under five million dollars was the official press release. So, what do you think, Brian? A lot of money. I mean, yeah, of course. I mean, it's a lot of money. There's only why he's, only the big boys are involved in that stuff. I mean, I know you get a lot of eyeballs. If you were to price it per person watching, it's, you're talking cents on the dollar. 4.4 .4 cents. Okay. 
but you still okay. got to have the capital anyway. You know what I mean? But it's 4.4 cents. Yeah. And that's what yeah. I was going to. Yeah. And Jody wrote, uh, depends on the product. Um, right. It's got to be a mass market. Someone's willing to give it to you. Well, people don't just give you $5 million for a commercial. But, you know, I know that truthfully, <laughs> um, nobody had really heard of WeatherTech floor mats really all that much until they were on it. Nobody had heard of GoDaddy right. prior to the Super Bowl. Right. And, um, you know, Doritos, in my opinion, has got it even better because right. Doritos does their annual you submit a commercial, you know, and sweepstakes. And they've got people sending in commercials galore with great ideas on them that, you know, people are voting on to see which one should be submitted for the Super Bowl. So they don't even have to produce their own commercial. They just have to toss up the five million dollars for it. So, right. right. I mean. I think that if you have a product that is mainstream and you can get that word out for 4.4 cents, it, it's well worth the money. And so you're going to put Keith Christopher ad out there this year. Is, is that what no, you're saying? Um, nor will I put a marquee ad out there. Um, and it comes down to this again, it's got to be mainstream. Our marriage rates are the lowest that they've been in the last hundred years. So you won't even find a men's warehouse problem. Well, men's warehouse, you might cause it's everyday clothing, but You'd never see a David's bridal up there right. because, again, less than 1% of the general population right. is engaged to be married. Right. So as a result of that, I can't even imagine a major player like them doing it. Although putting an NFL football player in a wedding dress, kind of like what Jason Jandai did a couple of years ago, might garner some attention for David's. You mm -hmm. never know. Mm -hmm. Who mm -hmm. knows? Maybe not the right attention, but it would definitely get people talking about it the next day. Right. So <clears throat> when uh, what's the last commercial that you can remember watching? Well, I do remember last year's was pretty terrible. I don't remember. But I forget remember about last year. The last commercial. It's been a year now. Mm -hmm. Think of the last commercial that you can remember watching. Well, I saw some today because they were previewing some of these these Super Bowl commercials on the news. So okay. Doritos uh, had some pretty good ones. Uh, obviously, uh, Budweiser always has a classic couple of right. ones. Um, go daddy, you know, those are pretty much the biggies. Those are the ones you remember. And those are the companies that, you know, a have the money to produce something worth watching too. I mean, you sure. put a commercial that's amazing. I think if you just, just cause you have five, you know, cost you four cents with eyeballs, it's still gotta be something that's memorable. Um, oh, I agree. You know what I mean? Or it's terrible, which also gets people talking about it. Right. You know, in right. this case. So, right. Right. um, so from that aspect, and again, could you ever imagine, having like a disastrous looking bridal show booth with a DJ booth set up and cords and cables and guys in t-shirts and jeans. And then immediately across the aisle, you have your booth, mm -hmm. super clean, perfect mm -hmm. set up, pimped out, great looking guys dressed to the nines. Right. Could right. be kind of cool too. So right. that's right. why I always gleam inspiration from, from other things. Totally gleam inspiration. Nate's um, I don't understand what DJ Chris wrote. Ketchup bottle grandma fart. I don't I don't know. Uh Snickers with Betty White a few years ago. That was a good one. That was that was a I thought that was a very a funny one. Yeah. Um That's the problem, Jazzy. That's why we're still having these arguments. YouTube DJ snobs talking mess on cheaper DJs. Are we D are we YouTube DJ snobs? Uh, well, I'm not talking down on small on on cheap DJs at all. I don't think. Hey, like I said, I think we said at the outset to each their own. Right. Back, back to the Super Bowl thing. I wanted to tell you. So I did hear that uh, this Justin is the is I think the only one that's done it three years in a row, as far as uh, musical acts. I don't know if that's accurate, but wait, uh, Justin's been on three years. He's done the Super Bowl three years in a row. He's the only one to have done that. Does that sound oh, right? He was on last year, so I didn't even know. No, no. Uh, well, he did. I think he did an appearance. Not last year, though. Um, I mean, obviously, he had the Janet one. Um, but and he was on with NSYNC along with uh, Brittany and okay. um, Aerosmith. Yeah. Because they sung Walk This Way together. Right, um, right. So this could be his third appearance. Yeah. So, which brings you to another thing. Um, do you know that they don't get paid? Yeah, they, I knew that. The artists yeah. don't get paid. Right. But, I mean, it's so, made their careers, some of them. I mean, look at Bruno. I think that that was a catalyst for him because at that time when he went, 
I mean, he was known by, you know, obviously some of the DJs and maybe some of the uh, younger, younger demographic, but not the older demographic for sure. They didn't know who he was. Right. No, I agree. I think that I think he's probably one of our biggest mainstream pop stars probably since since uh, Justin Timberlake. Yeah. yeah. I mean, and he seems to have a, a fun enough, um, a fun enough personality. I could see him in a in a teenage styled movie or a pop movie. Couldn't you? Yeah. Oh yeah, 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 for sure, for sure. I mean, he's so, he's kind of he and Justin are kind of neck and neck as far as ability. I mean, I've even if you've seen Bruno do Saturday Night Live, he's hilarious. He can act. Yeah. I mean, he's got he's like a triple threat, you know. So right. his his impressions are hilarious. So he's. he's I think Timberlake's going to be our Elvis or our Sinatra. That's my own personal opinion. Mm. So I mean, I can't think of anybody else that has had the crossover ability to do movies, be comedic, host SNL. Um, yeah. that's just my own opinion. Have you heard of his uh, latest album? Any of the cuts? Yeah, you know what? I gotta be honest. Like, it's not music right now for me. It's just so incredibly slow. I'm just not a fan. Huh. Like this, this whole like lower BPM, eighty to a hundred beat. Yeah, it's just not doing it for me. Right. So, well, it goes. It's cyclical, so it'll 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 come back. But yeah. Well, I survived uh, Nirvana and grunge, so I can survive anything that way. <laughs> yeah. So, so we've got uh, about four minutes left. So anybody that's got any questions whatsoever, post them up here. Do you have anybody commenting or adding anything interesting? Uh, let's see here. Um. Yeah, I think you pretty done, caught up. Who's done the most half times? Mike's asking. I don't know. I I think it is. I think it is Justin. Yeah, Jody um, pointed out three times. Um, Mark Sound agrees with Bruno thing with his uh, Super Bowl appearance was huge for his career. Um, Katy Perry did it. Um, I don't know if it really enhanced Katy Perry's um, thing that has that that much. Um, has Timberlake had a good movie though? Like Elvis had some stuff that everyone has seen. Uh, you know what? I think that uh, Tim. I thought Timberland was great in the Facebook movie. Uh, social. What was it? Yeah. The the. Uh, uh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Social something. I thought he was great in that. I thought he was good with Mia uh, Kumis in a Social Network. Thanks, John. Um, the Mia Kumar's friends with benefits. I thought that was, was a great movie. I love that. Movie. Yeah. Super cute. They were both very, very funny. Yeah. So I think he's had plenty, you know, and I, you know, again, I like him as a person. I like the way that he talks about his um, super cool, super hot wife. And, uh, you know, I, I think that it's, uh, it's very cool. Um, Katy Perry, Beyonce made the lights go out two years ago. Okay. Um, Let's see. Lady Gaga was on a couple years ago. Again, not the great, not the biggest fan of Lady Gaga, but doesn't mean that she's not super, super talented. So, so that's what I've got. Uh, that's pretty much where I'm at. And where are you about, watching it? What are you doing? What are you doing for Super? I'm doing Bowl? nothing, and I'm loving it. Absolutely. You have people over. Uh, what's that? You're gonna have people over. You're gonna. Uh, well, if you want to fly into Chicago, you can, yeah. you know, you can bring your wife, Tara. We can chill on the couch. Yeah. I'll, uh, I'll put a frozen pizza in the <laughs> oven and uh, we can uh, we can fire up the uh, the beer bong. I'm totally down. Well, so, who, who, who are you going for? I guess we should probably end it with uh, the actual game. What do you think? Um, <clears throat> you know, I'm truly indifferent. I guess there's a part of me that that would like to see Tom Brady win his what will this be his sixth? I don't know. I think Something so. like that. So I think this is a six because I saw a joke about uh, that his finger wasn't really hurt. His hand wasn't hurt. They were cosmetically adding another finger on for another Super Bowl ring. Yeah. So I think this is number six now. Uh, Mike Walter should know that. Uh, he's a football guy. I'm not a football guy. I'm a baseball guy. I've right. got uh, less than – I've got about probably just over 30 days till spring training starts with my Cubs. So I'm an excited, uh, I'm an excited guy. Right, right. So – so uh that's I'm all going, over here what who are you going for do you have I, a, uh, I don't have a dog in this fight no no i no. don't but i like the underdog so i'm going for eagles i think that okay. but you know it, brady's a tough guy to bet against because that yep. dude just always comes through in the clutch you just when you think they're down so 
they're going to need a big lead, I think, the Eagles. But you know what? Aren't they known for their defense, I believe, right? They're, that's like Yeah, but big leads team. have never stopped the uh, the Patriots. He's he's always managed to come back and yeah, and call it a day. So we'll be yeah. taking notes on these uh, commercials, obviously. And I'm we sure we can talk about that next week. Yeah, I'm sure there'll be and, some chatter on the performance. Scott Carroll's going for Eagles. Um, Jazzy Lamel has a question. I have a question. What do you think would be the best way to price your wedding events and more to a potential client without using, without, oh, it should be without losing them to a cheaper DJ? You know what? I don't really worry about losing to a cheaper DJ, to be honest with you, Jazzy Lamel. Um, I, I just, I, I've, I've determined what I believe that I'm worth based on being a full time company, my experience, what I bring to the table. And and going from that point of view, and I think part of that is you just have to double down. And if you believe it, you need to make your potential clients believe it. Right. And the other thing, I get it daily basis. I get at least a half a dozen emails. Thank you when I when I've emailed them stuff and followed up. Thank you so much for emailing back, but you're out of our price range. I just know that I need to have enough marketing in place that for every no that I have because they don't they don't do the pricing right or they don't want to see the value in the pricing, then I, I just move on to another one so that I still have my Saturdays full. Mm -hmm. So so that's all. Well John's gonna kill us. We're over. We're over? Okay. Yeah. Mark said you said it just like Ben's isn't worried about Kia. Thank you. Well thank you, Marks and Jazzy Lamel and Jody and Mike Walter and everybody for tuning in. So um, next week or week after, we've got a special guest coming that you guys are not going to want to miss. Uh, we'll drop that bomb on social media for sure. And um, so I'm surprised you're not DJing, Mr. Uh, Highfalutin. Do you not? You couldn't get a Super Bowl party? I Nobody was flying you out. No, I had uh, something and it, it it fell through, so it didn't land, unfortunately. Okay. So nope, nope. So nope. they took Justin Timberlake instead of you as the halftime show. Yeah. Is that it? But I do have a buddy who's out there doing some stuff. So Very uh, cool. uh, I'm I'm pumped for him. He'll probably announce it here shortly. But uh, Very good. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank you all for tuning in. Please let other people know about our, uh, our little uh, show here because we'd love to share and get feedback. You guys can hit me up on Facebook. We don't hey, mind the hate mail. What's that? So we don't mind the hate mail. No, not at all. So, so far, the only who doesn't like us is Mike Walter, but he still tunes in. So that's a view is a view, right, Brian? <laughs> exactly. All right, guys. Thanks so much. Have a great night and a great weekend. Tonight's DJ and TV show is sponsored in part by Electro Voice, DJ Event Planner, ADJ, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, Newmark, and DJ and TV Insiders.